Previously on Mighty Car Mods, we turned the key on our RB converted 1975 Fairlady and the engine started for the very first time. So today, we're ready to get an exhaust, set up the suspension and then hit the dyno to get that final power figure. With the engine successfully running, it's time to get the wheels back on the car again because it's going to be a busy day. Because the car is unregistered and unfinished, we're transporting it down to Castle Hill Performance where our mate Chris works and we're going to be making up a custom exhaust. Now there are loads of different options when it comes to sound and style, but there are some engineering and registration considerations so that we can keep it legal. What I'm opting for is a full 3-inch turbo back free-flowing system made out of stainless steel. We're going to be creating this system from scratch as opposed to repurposing an existing off-the-shelf exhaust. So the first job is to brief the guys about what I'm after and make sure all the different components are going to fit under the car. On the rear end, we're simply installing a straight-through performance muffler and then welding on a piece of 3-inch pipe for the tip. Classic and simple for this mad JDM icon. Once we've cut some bends, we can lay out all of the different components under the car to make sure that they're going to fit. Once everything is laid out perfectly, we can tack the pieces together and then Chris the master welder can finish off the system. Once the system's finished, the car is back on the transporter so we can finish it off before it goes down to get a wheel alignment. You may also notice that we've got a new air filter because the original one that we put on almost killed our turbo. During the build, we had the filter, the air filter on and off a couple of times on the turbo and in the process of pulling it on and off, we've actually noticed, I guess, a product fault. So that's a, a piece of wire in construction of the filter and there's also some cloth that's come out. This isn't actually a cheap filter, this, was a, this is a name brand filter and that definitely would have killed our brand new Garrett Turbo. So luckily I had another air filter lying around that was a spare from the Cresta that we've whacked on. Cresta. So that'll keep us going until we sort out this other filter. Well we actually do need to get a, um, an enclosed pod filter for engineering anyway, oh, but that one there will be good to keep us going just for while we're doing dynoing and stuff like that. Mm. But the moral of the story is, when you get an air filter, check your filters. Um, check and make sure there's nothing hanging out of it, because the outside of these is made of well, that, that's that's what it's made out of there. That's a good example. Yeah, so it's that's fine made of wire. this this wire. Um, that's what the mesh is made out of. So I would make sure when you're installing it that it doesn't have um, wires Any hanging, hanging out because you can see how long that is. That would have gone all the way in there. Oh, you can see how far that would have gone all the way that's, through. That's like well into the back of the turbo, which you can't even actually reach, but... That would have destroyed the turbo, 100%. right? 100%. Yeah. You see dust will do damage to a compressor wheel, so that being a, a solid metal object, if that actually got some speed up before it pulled that in, it'd be, yeah, at a minimum compressor wheel, but generally it damages the bearing pack and everything, so that would have been that whole turbo in the bin. Frightening. All right. We will sort that out properly later, but for now, that should keep it safe. We've called in a race suspension specialist to check out our car and he's agreed to set it up for us. But first we have to finish it and then take it down to his shop. It's a theme with a lot of our builds that we wanted this car to be super fast, but we also wanted it to be a sleeper, and with all of the original parts going back on, nobody would ever suspect that there was a GTR engine hiding under the bonnet, until they get chopped. And 
And with the bonnet back on, there it is. A mad RB powered sleeper fair lady in desperate need of some height adjustment and suspension setup. The aftermarket suspension components we've installed into our Fair Lady have much more adjustment available than on factory parts. It will allow us to fine tune the alignment to suit the street and track, as well as allowing us to get the right height exactly where we want it without compromising the handling. It's taken the guys a few hours to get the car fully set up, but now it is ready to roll. In fact, ready to roll on the dyno. So we're down at mainline and we're at that exciting part of the build where we finally get to see how much power this fair lady can punch out. This is not only where we'll try and get a solid power figure, it's also the opportunity to shake down the rest of the setup and make sure that everything works. Driving from the trailer to the dyno room is the farthest that this car has ever gone. So we are down here at Mainline Dyno today and it is very, very exciting because after months of work, today is the day that our good friend here, the uh, quite talented Scotty Hilzinger, aka Tuning Fork, um, is going to be weaving his magic onto this car. Now normally when we're doing our tuning, we go down to Haltech, but they've just moved into a massive new premises. They're setting up a new dyno room with a mainline dyno, and because that's not quite done yet, the guys at mainline said they can actually come down to the factory. So this is their testing pod, and in there they have a hub dyno, which is something that we have not used before on the show. Can you tell me about a hub dyno and what it does and what it's going to do for us today? For sure. So in the test facility here, these guys run every dyno that they make before they send them out to customers. So it just so happens that today they've got a hub dyno in there for testing, so we're going to hijack the dyno for a while. Yeah. Hub dyno is a bit different to what we're used to, where a roller dyno is what we're used to, where we strap the rubber tyre down onto yep. the roller. No rubber, no wheels now. They're just removed we're completely. Take, we're going to take them off and we're going to bolt these hub adapters straight onto the car. So that way the car will get jacked up a little bit, yep. bolt straight on, so that way the differential is driving the dyno directly. Yeah, that's uh, freaking awesome, man. It's a lovely setup. It's a little bit quieter because we don't have the noise of the rubber rolling around. Um, there's a little bit more consistency in this sort of setup because we've got, we, we don't get the tyre getting hotter and colder and squishing down and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, these are a fantastic thing. They do rate up to about 4,000 horsepower at the hubs. Yeah, right, okay. Which is Perfect. like du double <laughs> double what you'd normally get on a roller dyno, really, uh, right? Exactly right, yeah. yeah. So these things are fantastic. Um, I really enjoy using them. It's also really nice because I don't have to worry as much about the steering wheel and the car moving around. Yeah, yeah, because it's so, attached. Yeah, it's just bolted on, so I'm oh. really looking forward to it. RB26, Nissan! Yes! RB26! Get keen, Scotty! Congratulations, Thank guys. you very much, it's our first. <laughs> uh, let's let's, oh, let's was... tune an RB, everyone. <laughs> Are the mainline dynos rated to handle RB power? Well, it all depends on you know what RB it is, but but at a bare minimum, yes, our smallest one's 2,000 horsepower. This video is going on the internet, so our <laughs> 300 kilowatts will be 3,000 horsepower. Uh, well, there is that factor. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you need a button for that on your dyno, man. You just need like the internet button. button. Click. Oh, look, no, I made 2,000. It's horsepower. just it's a YouTube logo, and you press it, it just triples all the figures. No, you just need one key that says 2JZ. Okay, this is it. Let's get the car loaded up onto the hub dyno. Scotty, before we, I was about to say before we blow this engine up, um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, before we start tuning today, can you run me through a couple of the considerations when tuning an RB? I know you're super experienced uh, with this uh, platform. What What's going to happen today? Just run me through it. So, we more just want to get this thing running, get a number out of it the way that it is right now, and being such a fresh car, we just want to make sure that we've got no leaks, we've got no driveline sort of wobbles, we've got no yep. sort of funny stuff, first of all, that you might not pick up on the road. As far as tuning the actual engine, 
we want to make sure the air fuel ratio is right. So the air to fuel mixture that's going into the motor. RBs, this does have an inlet manifold on it, so a little bit sort of different here, but RBs typically run a bit hotter in the back because they've got some funny cooling issues and they've got some funny airflow issues. So cylinders five and six, we'll just sort of keep an eye on. We'll make sure that we get the same air to fuel ratio across every cylinder. Yep. Uh, ignition timing on something like this, we're on petrol, we are definitely gonna try and stuff some boost in it. Yep. So we'll make sure that all our knock control stuff set up properly so that if we do come across an unusual condition on the road, that that'll be taken care of. Cool. By the looks of our setup here, like have we done the right thing that we um, need to do with this? Like we've got 35 coils, we've got injectors, like have we have we done have we done what we need um, to do to make this easy for I, you? I like to think that the best compliment that any car guy can get is when you open the hood and I can say, this almost looks boring. Yeah, okay. Because there's not stuff everywhere. It's got a beautiful, simple inlet. Everything's simple. It's got nice clamps. It's got Nissan R35 coils, which just have the strongest spark, so we won't have any headaches. All the exhaust system is all beautifully done and so simple and neat. The boost control, everything's up high. It's it's done properly because it, you could almost, you know, you could be forgiven for saying, oh, they've forgotten to wire the car up. Yeah, right. Like that. Well, that, that's Dave, just being a legend, Good isn't on it? Good Dave. I mean, they, the car hasn't been driven yet other than just, like, on and off a truck, basically, right. to take it from exhaust, take it to get the alignment, the suspension set up. So today will be the first time it's driven, really. Uh, what's the history of the engine? Uh, Gumtree. Gumtree? We got it off Gumtree, which in Australia, Gumtree is like our second-hand used market. We know nothing about it. It's nothing. Craigslist for Aussies. I think today we'll just put as much boost as we can put into it until we get diminishing returns. So right. we'll just keep going up and up and up. As soon as we're not making sort of 20 kilowatts per run and it starts to get difficult, yep. that's where I think we'll leave it. Uh, cool. Put some K's on it and run the car in. Our first job is some low load tuning so that we can check the numbers and make sure the car is working and nothing is leaking. Marty's keen for more power, but as we increase the load, we see quite a bit of smoke coming from the engine bay. Yeah, there is quite a bit of smoke coming off the turbo. It's never and, been that hot. And through here, the smell, it's all, everything seems, that smell's pretty normal. Yeah. With Scotty on the numbers and confident that everything appears to be working as it should, we're going for our first power run. Our first run has been a success, so I give Scotty the instruction to smash the page up button which is going to give us more power. We've got 273 kilowatts at the wheels, but as we turn the boost up and go again, we've got a problem. That smoke coming out of the bonnet does not look good. So Scotty, we've just done a power run. We've ended up with 289.8 kilowatts, 290 kilowatts at the wheels, and that is the limit of our clutch. Yes, we've had a bit of an issue where this engine is, the whole build, the car's performing perfectly. Uh, we put 14 pounds of boost in it, and it made our lower purple line, so we're making sort of somewhere around uh, 260, 270 kilowatts. Yep. As soon as we've gone from 14 to try and bump it up to 16 pounds, as soon as it came on boost, we could see the clutch smoke straight out the side. The clutch has slipped and you could hear the engine kept revving up while the dyno was holding the wheels back. So, clutch is slipping. We're not gonna make you 300 kilowatts today, but it's a funny sort of thing, even though this is saying 289, it's 289 with the clutch slipping. So yep. I'm confident that in exactly the form that it is, if we just put an upgraded clutch in this, put it straight back on the dial and run it, no doubt in my mind that it, it'll run over 300 kilowatts or 400 horsepower. Mechanical Stig's just arrived. He's got a new clutch in the car. That's convenient. Let's go get it. Did you bring a clutch? He did. Did you? There's nothing wrong with the one that's in it. 
Really? You just need to bed it in properly. Oh, so it's fine? Yeah, it'll be fine. Are you sure? Yeah. With no clutch kicking and no anything and simp with 16 pounds? Yeah, normally they'd need to be bedded in for a thousand like, k's. Should we just try giving it one more zap? What, what would you like to do? Ben is the mechanical stig. That's your car, but I would, I would just drive it uh, as it is. Yeah, let's go again. Registered. Okay. It's your car. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll put another one if you want. <laughs> Did you just say one thing and you just... Yeah, that's, that happened. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Have you, have you met him before? That always yeah, happens. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, the good news is that nothing fell out. The smoke coming out was either the clutch bedding in or getting completely destroyed. So we're gonna go for another power run and find out. We've done it, over 300 kilowatts at the wheels. Let me kiss you all. Betty, I want to kiss your beard. Oh, oh, oh. With the car still operational, now we can do some adjustments to our high power tune. That's nice. We finished with 310 kilowatts at the wheels. That is 417 horsepower. Uh, that is fairly ridiculous power for a car of this weight. It has been over the Weybridge today. It weighs around 1,100 kilos. You can do the maths, it's off its chops. That's some pretty good power, man. And the RV didn't surprise us. It didn't surprise Scotty. Like it's probably a hundredth one he's, he's tuned. Um, it made the power that we expected, but that's a good thing because it means our engine works. This is a wrecker motor at the end of the day, or a gum tree motor. Yep. Um, so there it is, bolted in, plug in some decent size injectors. That's on 98 octane fuel as well. Yep. Um, more as possible with ethanol, probably needs more fuel system too, which is not really something I want to do right now. Yep. I mean, um, it actually doesn't need it. The thing is you can run it on ethanol, but it wouldn't actually flow enough fuel. So you'd need to probably do another pump, um, and, and then you're just making more, pi more power going through these tyres, like, it's a crazy amount of power. Uh, I'm actually really, really happy with it. I guess the next question is, what happens from here? Now, the car still does need to go through engineering, blue slip, that's what we call kind of getting our car legal and ready for the road. That process could take a number of weeks. There's a lot of really, really fiddly stuff that has to go on. Um, we can't use these wheels because they've got spacers. Um, we've got to do stuff with seat belts, we've got to do stuff with speedos. We've got this huge list of stuff to do and some of it is going to take quite a lot of time. So what we are going to do is we're going to keep working away on the car, but we're going to move on to other projects and work away on this in the background. And once this is actually ready to go, we'll run you through all the stuff that happened with the engineering and registration and stuff like that. Because otherwise we might be waiting a couple of weeks before you see something. We are really excited about moving on to some other projects. Marty's been working on something very exciting. And My I've got something. Car. Uh, I got something rad in the works as well. So a massive thank you to everybody who's been watching the series. And of course, Mechanical Stig, uh, who's been there to help out. Turbo Yoda, the guys from Haltech, Tuning Fork, uh, and of course Dave for coming down. Uh, thanks to the guys at Adrian Moore Suspension, everybody who has supported the build. And um, of course the dudes at Import Monster. It's been huge. It's been massive. It's and, been huge. And I think we were like, hey, maybe it could be like one or two, three videos, maybe that'll be awesome. Yeah. And it's just, there's just so much happening and so many details that we just want to yep. cover. So it's all there. And um, it's been a pretty fun journey. And I'm really looking forward to driving this on the road, which we can't do yet. Me too. We're not allowed to yet. But it's tuning yet. out Will. So now there's like that extra impetus to go and get the engineering yeah, yeah. stuff done, you know? The crazy thing is it all wasn't meant to happen this quickly. We were meant to have the car with its L20 yeah. and be able to drive around yep. Australia like that. And um, uh, with, uh, without getting all into that asbestos stuff again, losing all of that meant that uh, the whole build had to progress forward. Uh, it has been very, very quick to build this car in, it's been 10 weeks, yep. has it? Yep. Uh, 10 weeks, approximately. There's been a video every week, and every week we've been working on it. So, yeah, so it's been forward. awesome. So a massive thank you to our mates who have helped out. As Thanks soon dudes. as the car is legal and ready to go, it'll be back again. So if you're on every subsequent video going, Where's the 240 S30 260 Datsun Nissan? If you're not seeing it, it's not ready yet. As soon as it's ready, we'll be letting you know. So there it is. 
thank you very much. You will be on the road soon, my love. You will be with your redonkulous power. That's crazy. That's more than Super Grants. A lot more. It's considerably it's, it's more. It's crazy. You got no grip. Uh, no, we'll yeah, sort that out. But you'll sort that out. And thank you, Martin. Thank you. On the dark days when things don't work and... They never work properly, well, man. you know... This stuff's never guess, as easy you know, as, it, as, it, as, it, as it seems. I know. Oh, we'll just smash but you it. were there to say, get off the ground and smash wipe up, up your yeah. tears and clean up the coolant. We ended up with a very, very cool car that's going to be very, very nice to drive. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Thank you. Kebabs. Oh, thanks to Mainline for kebabs. letting us use their space. Kebabs. Please say kebabs. Yeah, kebabs. It's been so long, Let's man. Let's get that triple I'm sauce kebabs so that we do keen. sometimes. Amazing. Snack, snack pack.